Personally, I love Where Did Noah Park the Ark, but is it the best possible memory improvement book for you? That's what we're gonna explore in this video and look a little bit at what makes Aaron Katz's book here different than other books, but what also makes it the same because some of the differences are really amazing and some of the similarities are potentially a problem for you, depending on what it is you want to do with your memory. Hey there, Dr. Anthony Metivier from MagneticMemoryMethod.com. One of the things that I love about Where Did Noah Park the Ark is that it gives you a different look at the history of memory techniques than you've probably seen them before, and then that leads to different mnemonic examples, some of which I'd never heard of before, and they totally make sense, and they're quite useful. We'll get into that, but if you're new here and you love thinking about how to learn faster, how to remember more, and how to reform yourself so that you become the best possible learner for life, make sure to get subscribed. And for the love of memory, hit that thumbs up so the robots never forget the great memory tradition. Now, who is Aaron Katz and how do we know we can trust his memory? Well, he has written a number of books about memory improvement and you can watch him demonstrate his memory on YouTube. Thank you, Michael. So. I will repeat the number from the first digit to the last one. We have two, six, seven, four, eight, five, seven. The demonstration is no better or worse than many of the demonstrations that you've seen before, but they definitely prove the concept that he can do the basics of what he's talking about. And this is where one of the issues may arise in whether this is going to be a book for you or not. Because when we look at the subtitle of the book, Ancient Memory Techniques for Remembering Practically Anything. Is that what it was? Ancient Memory Techniques for Remembering Practically Anything. Yes. This is the problem in many, many memory books. What is practical? Is it practical for you to be able to give a demonstration of remembering numbers like Aran Katz does? Or do you need something more specific? Well, we'll get into some of the different parts of this book, but I want to keep that question in mind because it's something that plagues lots and lots of memory improvement books, and yet it's one of the things that makes lots and lots of memory books great because they are tackling the ways that information is encoded and teaching you the most direct techniques available to you, basically the instant that you learn them. <laughs> I, uh... What's that, Dr. Forget? You think that I forgot that I need to mention my forthcoming memory improvement book? A very strange and unusual book that takes place in a novel when a detective learns how to improve his memory by solving crimes. And you're going to get more than just this book. You're also going to join us for a memory improvement game called Memory Detective. So if you'd like a sample of this book, the game is going to start very, very soon, and you will get both the book and the game access to the game when you go to magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash ns to register your interest. And those who do not only get a sample of what's going on in the story to see if it might be something for you, but also you'll have first shot at a seat at our game when it goes live. So that's magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash ns. And this is only going to be available through me. And so far, the people who have read it said that it's pretty good and they really love how I've incorporated the learning of memory techniques over time in order to accomplish real life goals, but also incorporated some philosophical ideas related to memory training and just simply woven it together. Only one person has said, you know, this book of yours, it's kind of weird, <laughs> but I'm kind of weird. So I'll take that as a compliment. Again, magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash NS. So does where did Noah Park the Ark deliver? Absolutely yes, and in a number of ways. For example, what I love about it is how it deeply contextualizes things like where do abbreviations come from and what are their relationship to memory? And it turns out that some of that has to do with a particular group of people remembering concepts like freedom as they traded their coins in part of a military campaign. I didn't know this before, and you know, it's just one of those things that makes the book so cool and because of that story itself you just remember that detail so it's like a proof of concept inside of the book that these details help you remember different concepts related to the history of abbreviations 
And another cool aspect of the book is that Arankatz brings in mnemonic examples I never thought of before. So I usually use a snowman, like Dr. Forget here, for the number eight when I'm using one of the number memory systems that I use. But he suggests something different, which is like having glasses for number eight. And I never thought of that. I mean, they certainly, if you think of the right kind of glasses, they can resemble a shape of eight. And what's kind of cool about that is it gives me new ideas. For example, I usually use Ian Anderson as my image for 88, which is Jethro Tull's flute player, flautist, fifist, <laughs> and it's just like a great image for 88. But at the same time, you could have two different symbols for eight, because eight is a snowman, and a snowman wearing glasses could be another variation on 88. Or you could put those snow glasses, snow glasses, now, now we're getting more uh, new ideas coming out of here. But you could put those sunglasses or glasses inside of the pocket of your snowman, etc. So there's lots and lots of ideas that come from looking through the mnemonic examples that other people have to offer. However, there's always a trap in mnemonic examples, and that's something to consider because if you're constantly just going, well, I'm looking for the example that I can use, you're missing the point. You need to do as I've done. Look at the example and go, wow, that is an addition, a supplement to what I'm already doing based on your understanding of the techniques. So this book will give you an understanding of the techniques, but I would encourage you to not get lost in the mnemonic examples. For my taste, there's almost too many because we know from ancient books, they often advise, do not give the student too many examples. It'll make their brains lazy and they won't actually learn the systems and the methods that they use to build their own memory systems, and then they'll just be lost in a vortex of suffering. However, the cool thing is that Aaron Katz has a solution for that. So in Where Did Noah Park the Ark, you're gonna learn about how to memorize numbers, names, speeches, and there's a really strong section on language learning. But I think one of the most powerful parts of the book is how that Katz differentiates the difference between learning about memory techniques and actually doing them and he seems to be very, very wise about the many obstacles that hold people back. Now, this book is somewhat dated, so it didn't even have a chance to know the things that we now know about memory science and the formation of habits and so forth. So not all of the ideas are exactly aligned with some of the new things that we know about habit formation, but nonetheless, the ideas there about getting yourself motivated, creating the right mental framework, they're very, very sound, they're very solid, and I think you should have them in your arsenal if you're a person who struggles to get started and keep going. Some of those ideas are really, really good. And just one of them is the idea of taking a Superman pill. And we've seen different variations of the you know limitless pill come since this book came out. So Aaron Katz is definitely on the same wavelength as those ideas, but I think much more strong evidence for this is not the idea of, well, taking a Superman pill or a pill at all. It's the use of mental frameworks to help you create a foundation for taking action and then having a mental metaphor to refer back to to continue taking action when times get tough. Because as we all know, times can, will, and do get tough, and you need to be able to keep moving forward, and ideally keep moving forward with an amazing feeling that you can do it, you will make it, you will succeed. And if your mental metaphors are not strong enough, and they don't move you forward enough, then you're going to be in much more suffering than you need to be. So I would help you or advise you to look at the suggestions he makes there about mental frameworks and personalize them. I don't really like the Superman pill idea, but I like the idea behind the idea, if you know what I mean. And if you're interested in some of the science behind mental frameworks, you could read Indistractable by Nir Eyal. He gets into that and, you know, Nietzsche talked about it a long time ago and Nietzsche is referring to how the ancient Greeks did it. So the idea of using a persona or having some sort of mental model to refer to is very, very old. It's a survival strategy. It totally makes sense. And whenever you're struggling to get yourself going, you might want to have one and explore how it can work for you. Believe me, I do it almost every day. And I even have anti-symbols like 
Dr. Forget. So I firmly believe that Where Did Noah Park the Ark is for anyone who wants to know more about memory techniques, who wants more examples of how they can be used for various outcomes, and for even the most experienced people who just want to look at memory techniques in a slightly different way. And the history here is different than what we've seen from Lynn Kelly in the memory code and memory craft, and it's a supplement to that. It's neither better or worse, but it's another way of looking at it. And of course, Lynn Kelly's The Memory Code in particular goes much, much deeper. But one thing that I find so fascinating with Where Did Noah Park the Ark is it's got more of the Egyptian origins, the Hebraic origins, and we don't often see those. In fact, I've only seen them because I studied Biblical Hebrew when I was in grad school, and I'll never forget thinking and learning about how that people memorized the Tanakh and so forth, and hearing a rabbi say in an old article that was said to people over centuries and centuries and centuries, which is that if you want to use memory techniques to memorize things like the Talmud and Tanakh and so forth, <laughs> the rabbi said to a student, you have to become a serious student of the alphabet. And this is what this book is, is it's helping you become a serious student of the alphabet, but you need to take action. So many people think that if they read a memory improvement book, that in itself is going to improve their memory. But I've never read any such book, except perhaps my new novel, but even then it requires you to practice and it is showing you a portrait of not only what somebody's practicing, but how they're practicing in a daily life that is filled with crime that is constantly yanking the detective's attention here, there, and the other place. But I've made it as realistic as I possibly can, even if the crimes themselves and the danger that our Detective Williams gets into are a little bit over the top. So the, I'm trying to push a, a thing by having a novel in a game where you actually could perhaps learn memory techniques and practice them at the same time without having to divide the two. The whole point being is that Where Did Noah Park the Ark is a traditional relatively standard memory improvement book that has some really, really cool angles to it because of the author's experiences. Aaron Katz has a particular viewpoint. He has a particular background. He injects this book with those things. You won't get them from anybody else. You won't get them anywhere else. In the same way, any really good writer is going to put that into their memory improvement books. So the long story short is if you want to expand your perspective, and you want to see memory techniques from a different angle, you absolutely should get Where Did Noah Park the Ark? And you should definitely join us for the memory improvement game that comes with the novel. And that is available for you at magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash NS, at least the sample, and the ability to have the first notification when the tickets go live for game number one. And if you've ever struggled, then I would encourage you to think about metaphors like the Superman pill and learn more about what that's all about. Really, all you have to do to get started is think, what is the metaphor for my memory that I want? And you could use a story element like, where did Noah park the ark? I mean, the story of the title is giving you this idea that somehow information is related to space. So that is one particular metaphor. But you could think, and I've had students do this exercise many, many times in my live courses, where I say, what is your metaphor for your mind? And I know, I'll never forget a person saying, well, my mind and my memory, they're like a graveyard because that's where memories go to die. Well, that's quite negative and dark. But if you can just start there and then look it in the face for what it is, and then say, well, what do I want my memory to be like? Then you can start to turn things around. You can start to find the path that will help you get there. So I like to think of my memory as a magnetic garden. And this is quite like what your brain really is, a garden filled with vines. We call them neurons. And those neuronal connections, they are as healthy as they can be when they're correctly watered, they're weeded, so to speak, they're maybe fertilized with good information that actually improves your life, and you take care of that garden, and you'll be able to reap the harvest later. So that's the metaphor I like to use, but I've seen people use metaphors like their memory is like a hawk, and it flies over the field, and when it sees that information that it wants, it swoops down and it gets it. And that's a great metaphor as well. 
All you have to do is get started. What do you think your memory is like now? What do you want it to be? And then craft the path. The path is pretty simple. Learn memory techniques, apply them, get results. That's what this channel is all about. And if you like memory improvement book reviews, I mentioned Lynn Kelly here a couple of times. You might want to watch our conversation about her most, well, it's not even her most recent memory improvement book, but it's recent-ish. <laughs> and that is Memory Craft. So you can watch that next. I'll have the link on the screen and in the description below, along with your advanced passage towards becoming a memory detective. John Dearborn was found dead near Lionsgate Bridge at 5.15 this morning. A successful politician, at least according to some, police are asking for the public's help in finding the killer, or killers. The only problem is, I solemnly swear to uphold justice and constantly improve my memory by solving crimes. In a world where social media has fried the minds and memories of the citizenry, I will be prepared to testify in a court of law each and every time a criminal is found so evil is never free to walk our streets again, because I am a memory detective. Well, I hope you like that little clip from a trailer I've been putting together for the Memory Detective games. And here's an additional little teaser. This is Cafe Mnemonic, which is part of the game in the series. It's where Memory Detectives meet to hang out between their investigations and resources are in Cafe Mnemonic for them to grab hold of and do their research. It's a wonderful little place and I hope you'll be joining us there. So if you find this idea of a memory improvement game tied to detective novels intriguing, make sure that you're one of the first to play and the first to have access to the first book in the series. I've got eight all together. It's all planned out. I'm writing the eighth novel now so that all parts from two to seven are perfectly in alignment with everything that's set up in part one for a big twist ending and maybe twist ending is not quite the right word but let's just say a surprise ending with a twist so thanks again as always and if you haven't watched that interview with lynn kelly about memory craft do make sure to watch that next as we wait for this opportunity to meet together in cafe mnemonic to play our first game of memory detective <laughs>